Hey basketball players, today I'm going to talk to you about your positioning as a player when it comes to the low post as well as the high post. As we've seen in the Celtics and Raptors series, the low post is very important still to this day, even though more teams are stretching out to the three-point line. And the reason why it's important, because if a team starts defending you like how they defended Pascal Siakam, they're going to force you to the low post. And if you can't score from there, then you're in big trouble as a team. So let's get down to the different positioning on how you can play the low post and high post. So a lot of players, they think that playing the low post means that you're on the block. And some coaches will think that as well. And that's actually not necessarily true. Yes, you can be on the block asking for the ball. That's actually where I would be starting. However, you don't want to be getting the ball in the low post, like on the block itself, because it really limits what you're able to do to get to the rim. You're basically, all you can do from here is a baby hook from the middle, a turnaround jumper, or even a drop step, but even at that point, you are probably going to be underneath the rim when you finish your drop step. So you're basically only limited to a baby hook in the middle, a turnaround jumper, or some kind of fadeaway shot that is not necessarily always in control. So what you wanna do, yes, start in the low block, but when you receive that ball, Take a step out and then take a little bit of a hop so you can land on both feet at the same time. And you want to be roughly at that first hash mark and two to three feet out. This is the low post that you want to be able to score from because now when you turn, yes, you are farther away from the rim. That's no lie. We're quite a bit farther. We're a full three to four feet farther away from the rim. Now you're probably saying, well, how is that going to be easier to score from? Well, let me show you. When you're out here, there's so many different things that you can do. You can still do a drop step from here. You can still go to the middle from here. You can still do a turnaround jumper from here, but you can now open yourself up to up and under, quick up and under moves that'll have you going downhill towards the net. You can go and do a quick one dribble, shoulder fake, turn, and baby hook. And there's a half a million different move combinations that you can do from this spot from the low post you don't necessarily want to be in the low block you want to start there hop out and land on both feet roughly three feet away from the block it's going to give you a lot more option now something that i really like about nikola Jokic is one of the things that he does in the low post it's something that i used to do a lot and that is passing to players who are cutting especially me Think of, it, think of it this way, I was six foot two in grade eight. I was 200 pounds. Six foot two, 200 pounds in grade eight. I was an unstoppable force in the low post. And teams were starting to double team me. And that's when I learned how to pass from the low post. Now, when you're in the low post, obviously you're starting a little bit farther out, out here. From here, if you get a double team on you, if your players are doing nothing, there's very little you can do. However, if you have a couple of players on your team who don't move off ball, you need to talk to them about this because if you're stuck getting double teamed in the low post, and let's say the wing or the corner defender comes down and double teams you, what's that player doing? Sure, I can kick it out to him for a three, but maybe he's not such a great three-point shooter. Down here is a lot higher of a percentage chance of scoring than it is at the three-point line. So what can we do? Well, sure, if he's a great three-point shooter, kick it out, he'll have an open three. But I can guarantee you that if he is a really good three-point shooter, his man's not going to drop down. It's going to be somebody from the weak side. And when that happens, both players, if his man drops down, he can cut. If his man drops down, he needs to cut down the middle. Because at that point, he can give him a nice open layup. Because if there's nobody guarding him, then guess what's going to happen? He's going to have a nice open shot. And even then, if he cuts... I get him the ball and a help defender from that corner comes over, he can kick it out to that side. And we have ourselves a San Antonio style offense, San Antonio Nikolai Jokic offense, whatever you wanna call it. But either way, San Antonio was my day when Popovich had a killer team. But anyways, from there, we're moving to the high post. The high post has become very, very important because more and more teams are running four out, one in offenses, and the center is alone in the key. He could be playing the high post or the low post, and the high post is actually a very killer position. Now, usually when you get that ball in the high post, you're gonna be probably cutting to it. And again, you wanna land on both feet when you catch that ball. 
That way, when you catch that ball, you want to keep it up high, away from all those swiping hands. So you want to keep it high, maybe around neck height, maybe above, and you can still do a different, different cuts and jabs when the ball's up here. But the benefit of having the ball up here is if you are playing up against a zone, middle defender comes up, you have a corner cutter, or baseline cutter, you can hit them with pass, and life is all nice and easy. However, if you keep that ball up here and you turn and you have a middle defender coming up on you, the, the wings are spread out, you can even go jab and then you can attack the left side. There's so many different moves that you can use from the high post, but my best advice for the high post, and I'm talking about the whole free throw line, I'm not just talking about one side or the other. You could catch the ball here, but if it's coming from the middle, what you wanna do is get that ball and try to get to the middle of the key or the middle of the free throw line. This is an easy shot to hit for most people because of course, this is just a free throw shot. So it's easy to score from here as a shooter, but if you're playing against the zone defense and it draws up that middle defender, if the wings are, are then pushed out towards the corners, maybe you have a couple of three point shooters, you can do a couple of different jabs, maybe a step through jab and then a cut through, whatever it may be. And then if you do drive, so if you're cutting down, you're driving left side and you have a corner defender come in to play help, you can kick it out for a three. So number one thing you want to do in the high post against a man-to-man -man defense is to try and take your man one-on-one -on -one to the basket or take that shot if he's giving it to you. Number two, against the zone, take that shot number one. Number two, if you're drawing up a middle defender, look for cutters along the baseline. And number three, if they're staying out in the corners, they want to isolate you in the post, then you can do a quick jab and cut towards the basket, either get an end one or a layup or draw in a corner defender so you can kick that ball out. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.